Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today we have some Apple Watch Series 9 tips and tricks. Let's get started. All right, so we're using the Apple Watch Series 9 for this tips and tricks tutorial series here, but you can use pretty much any Apple Watch you have that has at least the latest version of Watch OS. And a lot of these tips will work for you as well. The first Apple Watch tip we're going to take a look at is the app view, and that's this right here. You can access it just by pressing on the digital crown. Now, if you want to change this view, you can tap on settings here, scroll down, and what you want to tap on is app view. You have two options. The option that is by default is grid, and then you have a list view. Tap on that, press on your digital crown here, and go back to your apps, and this time you'll see they're in a list view. And this looks really unique. It separates you from others who have Apple Watches as most people use the traditional grid view. And if you want to go back at any time, just scroll to the bottom of your view, tap on grid, and it'll bring you back to the original grid view. The next Apple Watch tip is widgets and how to create them and organize them. Now, if you didn't know the Apple Watch is equipped with widgets and you can access it from the watch face just by swiping up and you'll be able to see what widgets are already installed right here. My favorite part of the widget library is this section here where you can add custom applications. Now you can see I have a camera, I have the messages, and then I have a battery percentage. You can customize this just by tapping and holding. You can then tap the minus on what's pre-installed there, tap on the plus, and you can choose from all the apps that are available to be added to that section. So you can scroll all the way down like this. So if you wanted a quick access to say your heart rate monitor, you could add that in. Now, anytime you wanna use those quick apps, you just swipe up, bring up your widgets, tap on it easily, and you're right into that monitor. Additionally, you can access the widget library from the apps page of your Apple Watch, and you just wanna pull down from the top, and it takes you straight to those apps. You can still see all of the widgets as well, but if you wanna change any of the widgets here, you can tap and hold on them, Tap the minus to delete any you don't want, and then tap the plus at the top here if you want to add any new widgets to that library. We'll just tap on astronomy and then tap to confirm it, and we've added that in. Tap done, and now that's been added to our widget library on our Apple Watch. Now tying in a little bit with the widget library is a cool feature, and you can see I have a camera here. This feature is actually going to allow you to control your iPhone camera with your Apple Watch. And I've used this quite a bit when filming from a distance. So basically how this works, first off, I'll show you right here. We're just gonna remove that camera icon. You want to add the camera to your widgets. And we'll just scroll down until we see camera, camera remote, tap on that, tap on that, and it'll add it in. Once it's added, all you have to do is tap on that camera remote right here, and it's going to open the camera on your iPhone application and you can then move your phone around and you'll be able to see everything that's happening on that phone from your Apple Watch. So imagine my phone was way over here and it was just focused in on this duck, for example. If I want to take that photo with my Apple Watch, I just tap here. It's going to start to take that photo using a timer. And just like that, it took the photo. You can tap the options here and turn the three seconds off. You can flip to the front facing camera, the rear facing camera, turn the flash on and even control your live photos. So you have a few controls here. And additionally, you can do this with video as well, which is what I mainly use it for. Just tap and hold. You'll see a record icon appears up there and you can start recording with your phone. So you can be sitting in front of it, making TikToks or YouTube videos and controlling everything from your Apple Watch. Tap stop to stop the recording, and you can even see the previews of your photos right from the Apple Watch. The next tip is more of a troubleshooting situation with the Apple Watch, and it's a hard reset. We hope it doesn't happen, but at times your Apple Watch may malfunction, it may run slowly, it may freeze. If that ever happens, you can use a hard reset. And for this, you're going to press and hold on the two buttons on the side, so the digital crown and the side button. You're basically pressing and holding them together and you're just gonna continue holding them for about five seconds or so. Once the Apple Watch shuts off like this, you're gonna continue holding until you see the Apple logo appear. Again, it takes another maybe five seconds to see that Apple logo. Once it appears, you can let go, 
and let the watch continue to turn back on. Once it turns back on, you can continue using your Apple Watch like normal, and hopefully that fixed any frozen Apple Watch or glitches going on with the Apple Watch. For this next Apple Watch tip, we're gonna use the Apple Watch to find a misplaced iPhone. And for this, you're just going to press on that side button to bring up your control center. And this top option here on the right is going to ping your iPhone. So let's say my iPhone was down here a little bit further away. I'm going to tap on that. And as I get closer to the iPhone, you'll see that the Apple Watch distance is going down. So it's giving you a more precise way to find your lost iPhone. The next tip is the watch face and customizing it, mainly the complications. You can see this watch face with the Apple Watch Series 9 has four corners here. And we can customize those complications by just tapping and holding on the watch face here. And it's going to bring up the watch face options. We can tap edit. We're going to scroll to the right side where we have our complications. And we're just going to tap on any one of those corners and we can choose any option we want, any one of these complications to add there, which we can access and see the information. So, for example, if you wanted your heart rate, you could add that in there. Tap on it to add it. So now our heart rate's there. Any one of these that you don't want, for example, let's say we didn't want this one, we can tap this UV index and kind of scroll down to what we want. For example, a compass. And we can choose from the different compass options. We wanted a car parked waypoint. That's there for us too. And you can customize all of those. You can also swipe to the right, change the color of your watch face, and so on. Depending on what watch face you use, you may have more editing options or less. When you're done, you can just press on the crown, press on the crown again. And now all those four complications that we wanted are there for us. And we can access them simply by tapping. And it's going to open that up for us. Now, as we use the Apple Watch, obviously, we're going to get notifications. They make sounds, they beep, they light up the screen. But if you're in a situation where it's inappropriate and you all of a sudden have this thing ringing here, you can easily hide the screen. Just put your hand over the screen like this. It'll basically just mute that notification for that moment. That way you're not interrupting a meeting or a call or anything like that. Now, for those of us who need a little extra time when we're using our watch or for anything we're doing, we can set this watch to be five minutes fast. So we're going to open our settings here again, and this time we're going to scroll down to the clock section. This option here, it says plus zero minutes. If we tap on it, we can set this watch to be as much ahead as we want, but we'll just select five minutes fast for now. And you can see my iPhone is 1036, which is the accurate time. But on my Apple Watch, it says 1041. So again, you can set that as far ahead as you want. For this next Apple Watch tip, we'll go over some customizations you can do. So we'll open settings and we're going to go down to where it says display and brightness. First off, you can control the brightness of your screen just by tapping on the two little suns. You can control the text size here. So if you need larger text, you can expand it there and see it live as it happens. If you want to make the text smaller, you can do that as well. You also have the ability to bold your text here and you can turn the always on display off. So as you saw throughout this video, the Apple Watch has this always on display, so it's not going to turn off. It's just going to dim the screen. But if you don't like that, just go into those settings, turn that always on display off. Now, instead of just dimming, when you see my hand went over it or when it times out after the allotted time, you'll see that the watch face actually turns off completely. You can always just fling your wrist like this to bring the watch face back up anytime, but it's totally up to you. Personally, if you were trying to save your battery life, you could turn this off, but I like to keep it on. And while it's on, you have all of these options that you can configure as well. The next Apple Watch tip we're going to be looking at is within the settings application here, and it's the SOS features that are available with this watch. So what you want to do is tap SOS and you want to understand how these work. So if you ever get into a situation where you're in an emergency, maybe you fall and you can't move, you can press and hold on that side button. It's going to bring up some emergency options here. The main one you would focus on is the emergency call. You would swipe it to the right. It would go through a process of counting down or calling the emergency services. That way you can get help when you need it. The other options here are the fall detection and this one here will detect if you fall 
And you can set this to always on or only during workouts, but keep in mind that when you fall hard, this is going to trigger an emergency SOS call to emergency services. There'll be a process of it counting down. So if you fell and you're okay, you can cancel the call. But if you don't move within a certain amount of time, it's going to place that call and the emergency services will be on their way. And keep in mind that if you do a lot of strenuous activities or action activities, it could trigger just from you maybe getting hit on a football field or something like that. So you may want to have this set to only on during workouts. To avoid any kind. The next one is crash detection, very similar to the fall detection, except this one is going to re reference you in a car crash. If it detects a car crash, it's going to do that same thing. It's going to start a countdown, an alarm, and all that stuff again, just like it did if you fell. But if you don't stop that alarm, it's going to initiate the call, and emergency services will be on their way to help you. So it's good to know where this is and how to use it. It's the side button to access it yourself or you can have those features on if you're in a crash or have a hard fall and it can then call them for you. So those were some Apple Watch Series 9 tips and tricks that you can use to get more from your Apple Watch. But if you're looking for an even more detailed tutorial, you should check out my how to use the Apple Watch Series 9 video. The link is in the description and it's also included in the full Apple Watch Series 9 tips and tricks series. So check it out to learn more. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help you out. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification box to be notified when I post new videos. And I'll see you in the next one.